You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Reynolds, the owner of Summer Properties Northwest, Reynolds & Klein Appraisal, and your host of this episode of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Will Seattle's mayor, Jenny Durkin, get charged with criminal charges for her part in CHOP this past summer? That's what we're talking about. Not only are we talking about Mayor Durkin getting charged, we're also possibly being talk we're, we're also possibly talking about Ted Wheeler, mayor of Portland, being charged for 108 days straight of or nights straight of protests. That's what we've got going on. Let's take a look at a couple of news stories that investigate this topic that we got to look at. All right. So the first article I've got is Department of Justice explored possibly charging Portland officials amid protests. Now, Department of Justice, that is the federal level. Those are the feds. We're talking about state level politicians, both mayors. So they are not federal, but they could be charged by the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice can charge just about anybody they want. Um, so these are kind of some crazy stories going on of, all right, we've got these pretty democratic, not pretty, very democratic cities that are looking at having the Department of Justice take a hard look at what's going on. So this is an article from Spectrum News. I don't know a lot about them, but it's a pretty good article. And this uh, storyline, I've I've been following this storyline, and I saw the stories when they came out a couple of days ago. But what kind of secured me on wanting to, to talk about this is that Tim Poole covered this story, and specifically these two articles. The second article I'm going to cover is a local Seattle article. And there are so many news stories coming out of Seattle right now that are hitting the national kind of spe- the national level of discussion, both politics, business, and, and everything else. So let's jump on in. The Justice Department explored whether it could pursue either criminal or civil rights charges against city officials in Portland, Oregon, after clashes erupted there night after night between law enforcement and demonstrators. This is from a department spokesperson. And this was as of yesterday, the revelation that federal officials researched whether they could levy criminal or civil charges against the officials, exploring whether their rhetoric and actions may have helped spur the violence in Portland, underscores the larger Trump administration's effort to spotlight and crack down on protest related violence. The majority of the mass uh, police reform demonstrations nationwide have been peaceful. Have they really? I don't think they have. I think most of them have ended in violent riots. I know Portland certainly has. I've been to Portland. I covered that. You can watch me get tear gassed. Um, That was not peaceful. And the reason there was that type of activity happening is because it was not peaceful. It was, there was a lot of violence. It was not, it was a very unsettling scene down there. And the scene here in Seattle at CHOP, I mean, when you've got an area where you got no police, you got multiple shootings, all kinds of stuff going on. It was not a scene that I would consider peaceful. And I think um, when I watched the Tim Pool podcast, and he is a YouTuber, when I watched his podcast, he mentioned that according to Axis, I can't remember, it's an ins- it's a statistical a company that reports on statistics, they said that so far, there have been over $2 billion, two billion with a B dollars worth of claims, insurance claims made because of the peaceful protests. So if they're so peaceful, why is there $2 billion worth of damages? Well, it's pretty obvious, right? All right. For many nights, federal officials were told that Portland police officers were explicitly told not to respond to the federal courthouse as hundreds of demonstrators gathered outside, some throwing bricks, rocks, and other projectiles at officers, and not to assist federal officers who were sent to quell, uh, who were sent to try to quell the unrest. And so what's been happening in Portland is I think up until maybe about 10 days ago, a ton of arrests have been made. And guess what? They are not letting these folks out of jail. They're spending some time. And when you lock away the people who are responsible for the unrest, I know all across the United States, that's happening. Arrests are being made left, right, and center. There's so many stories. If you check that out, you can just see, oh, yeah, that guy's going to jail for a while. Oh, they're not being let out on bail. Oh, there's their bail, a million bucks. 
We've got some serious stuff going on. So that is what is being done to kind of quell the peaceful protests slash violent riots. You lock these people up. And guess what? They're not going to come out for a while and keep doing the same thing. Because what would happen, especially here in Seattle, and I covered a lot of chop here in Seattle, is that they would make arrests and those people would be out within hours of being arrested, no charges made. So the prosecutors are like, yeah, no, you're a peaceful protester. Oh, yeah, good to go. You're out of here. Sorry to have that uh, inconvenience to your life for the last two hours. You're good. But people are literally breaking the law left and right. And guess what's happening? Nothing. And when they know that's the thing, they be they could be arrested time and time and time again. And it doesn't really matter because they know they're going to get out because they're not going to be prosecuted. Now they're being prosecuted. And guess what's happening? The protests Oh, they're miraculously disappearing. They're slowing down. Portland, that's slowing way down, isn't it? I'll be curious to see what happens this weekend. But because um, I still kind of follow that. But a lot of these peaceful protesters, um, yep, they're ending up in jail. And a lot of them are going to do some hard time. And they're going to be like, oh, not such a good call. I shouldn't have been there at the tail end. Just shouldn't have been there. And the projectiles at officers, the one that I like is, oh, it was just a water bottle. Yeah, but it was full of water and it was frozen. You ever get hit by a piece of ice, a big block of ice? Yeah, it's hard. That can really hurt you if not kill you if you got hit like right in the forehead. Not good. The department had done research on whether it could pursue the charges, spokesman, spokesperson Carrie Kupik said. She declined to comment on the status or whether charges would be brought, which leads to the option of charges still might be brought. I don't think this story is over. Because if that's her official story, hmm. It kind of leaves the door open, doesn't it? But bringing criminal uh, civil rights charges against city officials for protest related violence would likely present an uphill court battle for federal prosecutors. Okay, so it'd be tough to tough to make it stick, right? Justice Department officials disputed news reports that Attorney General William Barr told prosecutors in the department's civil rights division to explore whether they could bring charges against Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin for allowing some residents to establish a protest zone this summer. President Donald Trump has blamed Democrats and specifically pointed to Portland's mayor, Ted Wheeler, who he says has not done enough to stop nights of looting and unrest in cities across the U.S. Trump has called Wheeler a wacky, radical left, do-nothing Democrat mayor, and has said the city will never recover with a fool for a mayor. Kind of harsh words from the president. A wacky, radical left, do-nothing Democratic mayor. Ted Wheeler is is hated by everybody. He is hated by all sides. That guy has just been hammered on all summer long. And I know even when I was down there in Portland, all the protesters had a bunch of Ted Wheeler chants. They feel like he was in alignment with the police and he wasn't doing enough to protect the protesters. But then again, he wasn't allowing the police to really go after them or the prosecutors to go after them. And he wasn't allowing the police to help out the federal agents protect the federal buildings. There was, so there was all this kind of standoff. And in the meantime, the protesters are just kind of trying to chip away at these federal buildings. I don't know what would have ever happened. I mean, what are they going to do with a federal building? I don't know. I just I don't even understand the logic there. It makes no sense to me. But I'm not out there protesting either. All right. So Trump has helped has heaped blame for the unrest on Democrats who are leading the cities where violence has occurred and tried to keep focus squarely on pockets of protest related violence instead of on the point of police reform and the larger movement of racial injustice. So when I've been out at any of these peaceful protests, I always get confused as well, because I am not really seeing this, the whole, the police reform and the racial injustice. That's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a bunch of violence that it usually ends up in people yelling at the police. And then in a lot of cases, you've got looting and just basically mayhem going on just a lot of craziness. And maybe the craziness moves up and down a street, or it goes out to Mayor Durkin's house, which is the protesters here did that in Seattle, right? They protested right up to the mayor's house, did some graffiti, maybe did a little damage, that kind of thing. They also did that to Mayor uh, Ted Wheeler's house or his condo, I think it was 
in Portland. He lived in a really nice condo. I think it, somebody assigned a value, or maybe it was a, like a Zillow value of like 800000 I might be off a little bit, but yeah, he lives in a really nice project. And he recently said, you know what, because of the protesters, I'm going to move out. I'm really sorry, other residents of the building. And that is great and all. But how about the businesses that are in that area that can't get out of the way of the protesters? What about all the other residents <clears throat> in those areas that it's not their fault that Mayor Ted lives there that the protesters like to hammer on? What happens there? Nothing, I don't think. So more than 100 people have been arrested in Portland on federal charges related to the unrest in the last few months. The FBI has said that it is also shifting the agency's resources to focus more heavily on violence and federal crimes committed during nearly three months of unrest during nightly racial injustice protests in the city that often end in vandalism, clashes with police, and dozens of arrests. That's what we hear time and time and time again. And yet nothing really seems to happen. So... I think you're going to see a ton more arrests, and that is what's happening. And it's just going to take some time to get these these uh, bad apples off the street. And uh, you take them out of circulation, guess what's going to happen? The protests are going to slow down, if not seize. Because if you got no people to, if you have no people to protest, makes the protest kind of limited, doesn't it? Second article, new. Uh, and this is from Como News. Attorney General explored possible charge criminal charges against Durkin, Mayor, Seattle Mayor Durkin, for allowing CHOP. Well, that doesn't sound good either, does it? A new report from the New York Times puts Seattle in the spotlight. According to the newspaper, Attorney General William Barr told federal prosecutors to consider sedition charges against rioters, and he asked the Dep Justice Department to explore possible criminal charges against Mayor Jenny Durkin for allowing the Capitol Hill Organized Pro Protest Zone, or CHOP, to form. Whether this leads to legal action is unclear, but Barr reportedly singled out Durkin as responsible for the violence that unfolded in a zone where police steered clear. And the police were basically told to stand down. Yeah, stand down. And so then you had a couple of shootings that... Didn't end up well, especially for the people who are no longer with us. Um, and so you've just got this storyline that's crazy. I think this part where you go after Durkin, like in the previous article, I think it's gonna it would be super difficult to prove what they're trying to come up with. And I think this is mostly political. But a lot of other people have said, since when do you basically let the summer of love devolve into this situation where you don't have police protection in an area the taxpayers are paying for and business owners are paying for and you've got just a bunch of looney tune people running around how does that work and from all the comments that i get on youtube most other people in other parts of the country are like yeah how does that work you guys are crazy what is wrong with the water in seattle and i keep harping on this but so many people leave comments of like yeah Keep your nonsense in Seattle. We don't want it. Keep your nonsense in Portland. We don't want it. Understandable, because this is just stuff that most people don't want in their community. They don't want it. People do want um, the racial inequities to be addressed, but not this way. That's bottom line. That's what most adults want. But I don't think it's adults that are out there protesting, because I spent a fair enough time um, out there with the protesters doing live streaming, shooting videos, that kind of thing, that I can say, yeah, those are not adults dealing with a full deck of cards. Professor Andy Siegel, a constitutional law expert at Seattle University, calls it ludicrous. Well, yeah, but anybody from a university, they're kind of, uh, they're not in typically a position that, say, the police would agree with with a lot of adults would agree with, with most business people would agree with, are they? You got all these things coming out of universities that are like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't know about that. So they're saying the mayor may have violated criminal statutes, very serious criminal statutes, simply based on discretionary decisions she made, like where to deploy the police, when to pull them back, Siegel said, and he's the uh, Seattle University professor. Barr also wants rioters charged with sedition, which is the crime of trying to overthrow the government. It's a statute that Siegel calls archaic. 
Basically, it's a junior varsity treason charge, Siegel said. We have charges for rioting. We have charges for assault. We have charges for particular terrorist acts. And in the modern world, we tend to use those instead of sedition. But I think the point is, is that the Department of Justice is kind of looking at all the options. Hey, maybe we should try that out. Maybe, even if it doesn't stick, kind of puts everybody on guard, doesn't it? Hey, we're not dealing with this nonsense anymore. And towards the, chop, the end of CHOP, even though Trump didn't send in the troops, I think a lot of people were like, send in the troops. Because I had so many messages that basically said, deal with this. This is, this is not good. This is not about this is not about the message of racial inequity. This is something far different and we shouldn't be allowing this in a major metropolitan city like city of Seattle. So D Durkin issued a statement regarding the New York Times story. Here it is. Today's report is chilling and the latest abuse of power from the Trump administration. As a former US attorney, I took an oath of office to protect the constitution and the rule of the law. That is the bedrock of our country and why the Department of Justice cannot become a political weapon operated at the behest of the president to target those who have spoken out against this administration's actions. This is an act of tyranny, not of democracy. I have a hard time with that because what I saw at CHOP, that wasn't really what I was looking for. That was a freak show. Yeah, like my friend Bill Sammer and this was uh, Chop at Night. I did one video where I just kind of went to Chop, took a, I don't know, a bunch of footage and just recorded what was going on there. And then everybody in the video is, yeah, Chop's pretty feasible in the day, but oh, at night, you can get killed. It's not good. It's really dangerous there. So, of course, I had to go there and film Chop at Night, and we did that. And during that video, my friend Bill Sammer from Fairway Independent Mortgage, he indicated, and the quote was something along the lines of, it's like we stepped on a different planet, somebody else's planet. And that's kind of how weird it was at CHOP is like, there's no police. And there's all this crazy stuff going on. And there's all this, these protest messages, and the police department is all kind of boarded up, and there's fencing in front of it. And you've got um, nut jobs guarding it because there's no police in it. So what is going on there? And then it devolved into even worse situations that are the uh, subject of multiple lawsuits. That's what you got going on. Here's Mayor Durkin again. Ultimately, this is not a story about me. It's about how this president and his attorney general are willing to subvert the law and use the Department of Justice for political purposes. It is particularly egregious to try to use the civil rights laws to investigate, intimidate, or deter those that are fighting for civil rights in our country. CHOP wasn't really about fighting for civil rights, was it? It wasn't. Not surprisingly, just weeks before an election this year, in yet another effort by President and his administration distract from, this, from his abject failure to lead America through to its toughest challenges. He downplayed the threat of COVID-19, which has cost nearly 200,000 American lives. He has done nothing to help millions of Americans facing economic crisis. And he has threatened to withhold funding from Seattle and other American cities because of their commitment to racial justice. He also rolled back common sense climate project protections that undoubtedly have played a part in the climate fire crisis that we are currently experiencing. Most of that's pretty subjective. It's kind of almost as subjective, but not as subjective, in my opinion, as Mayor Durkin's role in CHOP, because let's face it, she's the mayor. And when her house was marched on by the violent rioters, guess what? A couple of days later, boom, CHOP was over. And how do I know that? Because I was there. There's videos of it. All right. I will continue to fight for what I believe is right, and I will not be distracted by these threats from meeting the challenges facing our great city, which are a pandemic, an economic crisis, a climate crisis, and a civil rights reckoning. All right. Most of this is just political stuff, right? I mean, all we're doing, all Durkin is doing here is kind of redirecting the attention to what has Trump done bad. What has he done bad? That's all she's doing. All right, late Wednesday night, U.S. Attorney Brian T. Moran released additional information. Throughout this lengthy period of civil unrest, I've had multiple conversations with Department of Justice leadership. They have asked for information about protest activity devolving into violence, about federal interests implicated by the Capitol Hill organized protest, and about the cases filed in this district regarding federal crimes. 
That's some fishing expeditions, right? At no time has anyone at the department communicated to me that Senator Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin is, was, or should be the subject of a criminal investigation or should be charged with any federal crime related to the Capitol Hill organized protest. As U.S. Attorney, I would be aware of such an investigation. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you're not. Don't know. Because what do we got going on here? We got an investigation. Or a story about an investigation. Maybe that's all this is. Maybe that's all we need is a story about this. And then it just kind of goes down this crazy rabbit hole. Like so many of these stories do. And they don't really go anywhere. But I'm going to cover it either way. So Siegel doubts Durkin would ever be charged and sees Barr's request as a play for swing voters on behalf of President Trump. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I think a lot of people here in Seattle were really upset with well, with how CHOP was handled, because it kind of made us look ridiculous to the rest of the nation. It's like, what is going on out in Seattle? And I'm the Seattle Real Estate Podcast host, right? So I'm going to cover it. So it's like, what is going on? <clears throat> so this is the fallout. This is the fallout you got to deal with when you allow a CHOP, an organized protest, or the one I like before that was CHAZ, which is Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. We're in an autonomous zone. We're no longer part of the United States of America. We are our own thing. Oh, but wait, we don't really want to be an autonomous zone. That has some negative implications. We're still part of the US. Let's go. Let's change this whole thing midstream. Let's go with CHOP, Capitol Hill Occupy Protest, because that is a more vanilla term for what we're doing here. And we really are concerned about labeling. So we're going to go with CHOP. So here is a little bit more on this story. I think it's mostly about the re-election, Siegel said. It's about how they are centering these protests in the election campaign and trying to make it seem like the U.S. is under attack. Kind of were, weren't we? Didn't it feel that way? Here in Seattle, it certainly felt that, felt that we were under attack by these protesters. It didn't feel like the peaceful protesters were not attacking us. It felt like they were attacking an area. What's the first thing they do did when they set up CHOP? Yep, they put kind of a fence around it. They, put, they blocked off the intersections. They took the big concrete blocks that were delivered a couple of days into CHOP and made these kind of areas and they put armed guards up on a number of them. Yeah, armed guards. That's what they did. So they immediately took their area, kind of quadrant it off and said this, these are the boundaries. These are the areas. All the stories that I heard about uh, people being kind of hassled for going in there and you can only get in there if they they allow you to. I don't think those were true. I was hassled at least a couple of times. Um, but it was because I was there at odd times filming because I had tips from uh, people that knew kind of what was happening as to when events were going to take place. So I was there filming at some weird times. And so people were asking questions that I was like, Oh, yeah, huh. that's an interesting line of questioning. And I know where you're going with that. And um, I'm just a real estate dude from Bellevue covering this story. And that's what I'd go with. And guess what? It's the honest truth. All right, so that's about it on this topic. I don't think either Jenny Durkin is, uh, Mayor Jenny Durkin is going to get prosecuted. I don't think any charges are going to be pressed. I don't think Ted Wheeler will either. Uh, will they get reelected? I don't think either of them really will. I know Jenny Durkin is up for reelection in 2021, I believe, and Mayor Ted Wheeler is up for election, I think think fairly soon, but I can't be sure. But I do know that he is behind in the polls. And maybe it's this November. I'm my Portland politics is a little bit weak. But I know I've read stories where he is behind the polls, because he has somehow managed to upset just about all sides. Nobody likes Mayor Ted, just Ted wheel. I, I actually feel kind of bad for him. And if I lived in Portland, I'd probably be more upset. But we've got enough to worry about here in the city of Seattle. We've got a couple of recall, we've got elect, um, elected official recalls, namely Mayor Jenny Durkin. And I think the next hearing for her is in October. We've got a second recall effort for our socialist slash Marxist uh, Seattle City Council member, Shama Sawant. And a judge just uh, ruled this past week 
that that uh, recall can move forward. They threw out a couple of charges on Mayor Durkin's uh, recall uh, recently, but a handful of them are still going to stick. And I think she is up on six different charges of why she should be recalled. So a lot of stuff going on. You've got a lot of political heat happening for events that have already taken place. But down in Portland, they've still got kind of an active scene. But I think you're going to see a lot less of that. And I'm actually pretty thankful because these these riots and these what we're calling and for you on the podcast, I'm putting in air quotes, the peaceful protests, which are not they're not peaceful. There's been a handful that have been but most of them devolve into just this crazy, crazy acts of violence and looting. And it's just a mess and people hating on police and all that craziness. I'm I would be glad to have all this stuff over with that. I'd I'd be okay with that. Because I don't care what side of the political spectrum you're on. I don't think and this stuff is helping anybody. I don't see anybody going, Oh, yeah, this is really helping me change my mind. It's just not doing that. I think that I think the eye opening part of okay, maybe we need to rethink some of the police um, behavior on this stuff, maybe we need to, we need to do some more training, that kind of thing, defunding the police, that's not really going to help things out. Um, but these are just my opinions. But again, it's my podcast, Seattle Real Estate Podcast. So again, I'm Sean Reynolds from Summer Properties Northwest, Reynolds & Klein Appraisal. Thank you so much for tuning in. Love to have you subscribe. But if you don't want to, that's okay too. But tune in to the next one because I'll be talking more about this because there's going to be more stories with Mayor Durkin. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.